Welcome, everybody, to Hump Day Coffee Break, uh, Wednesdays at 11 o'clock. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the news feed. So the first point is to really understand that the battleground is really the, the news feed, not your Facebook page. So most of you may know this, but most of your Facebook fans aren't visiting your Facebook page. Probably less than 5% proactively visit your Facebook page and look at the posts on your page. Mostly what people are doing is they're seeing your updates in their news feed, right? And so the question naturally arises, what makes some people see our updates from our page and other people, they don't see our updates from our page and their news feed. What's the deal here? No one wants to see every single update from every page that they've ever liked or every single friend that they've ever accepted a friend request from. And when I use the word friend, I'm using air quotes, okay? The newsfeed algorithm determines, it's an algorithm, very complex algorithm that determines which posts appear in each user's newsfeed, all right? So every single Facebook user, 1.2 billion Facebook users, they all have a unique newsfeed. So the content in my newsfeed is totally different from the content in your newsfeed. And this is largely based on four factors, four major factors. Uh, the four factors are the relationship between me and my friends, uh, content that my friends have published and pages that I've liked. You know, if I like those pa content from those pages and if I like content that my friends are posting or updates from my friends, then Facebook rightly assumes that I should continue seeing the updates from this page. Facebook isn't the one that's really determining what's in everyone's news feed. It's really Facebook users are actually determining that by their actions. You know, if they're liking lots of updates from a page, they will continue to see updates from that page. If they like specific types of content from that page, they will tend to see more of those type of uh, content from a page or a person. For example, photos versus text updates versus links versus videos. So the algorithm kind of gets very specific about the post type. And also, if there's a post from a page that I've interacted with in the past, and they've published an update that is really great, and it's gone viral, lots of people are liking, commenting, and sharing it, Facebook will say, hey, let's distribute this to more fans. Let's distribute this to more fans because obviously the content is receiving a lot of likes, comments, and shares compared to the average update from this page. Okay, so Facebook looks at the, the content itself. And then, of course, the news feed, uh, everyone's news feed, you can control what's in your news feed by hiding posts. So if you get a sponsored post from a brand, and you don't like the brand and you don't know why it's in your newsfeed, you can simply hide that post. You can report it as abusive or spam. Uh, so every single Facebook user has this ability in the newsfeed if they simply mouse over um, you know, a little X to the right of any update in the newsfeed. Uh, for example, there's a little, well, you can't really see it, but there's an X right here. I can click on that and then it will, it will give me a choice. Do you want to unlike this page, unfriend this person, hide all posts from this person, report it as spam, um, report it as abusive, you know, that sort of thing. So Facebook um, does that as well. So these are the four major factors, right? Uh, so let's get a little bit more specific. Now, there are a couple more tweaks that Facebook has added to this. Uh, one is called story bumping, okay? So the idea here is that posts with high engagement that were missed um, which will now get a second wind in, in a Facebook user's newsfeed. So let's just say that you publish an update on your page and it goes out at, say, 7 in the morning, and a fan who normally would like, comment, and share updates from your page, so they're already telling Facebook, yes, I like content from this page, yes, please distribute content in our page. And again, they're not saying that. They're basically saying that by way of likes, comments, and shares, okay? So um, if that's the case with me, and I happen to miss that update that was published at seven, but it is performing relatively well, Facebook will surface that back up to the top of my newsfeed, okay? So we can see the timeline here in this example. This example is from Facebook, and it's showing, or this graphic, I should say, is from Facebook. And here's an update from nine, Here's 9 o'clock, here's 8 o'clock, 
right? So this is the past, 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Um, but because I missed an update that was really great from a page or from a person, it's received lots of comments and whatnot, Facebook will say, great, John just logged in. He's, he's on Facebook. Let's surface this highly um, relevant and highly engaging update. Let's, let's resurface that into John's news feed so that he, he, so that he doesn't miss out. Okay, so that's called story bumping. Uh, the other uh, factor in the news feed is uh, the algorithm actually looks at the, the, the 50 people and pages that a user has most recently interacted with when surfacing content. All right, so it kind of gets a little bit more specific right here. It's basically previous interactions. This is really getting more specific. It's basically recent um, previous reactions or previous interactions. Okay, so the algorithm looks at the people and pages that I have most recently interacted with when surfacing uh, content, when deciding what's going to appear in a newsfeed and what's not going to appear in a newsfeed. Okay, uh, there's also native link posts. Uh, Facebook has tweaked the newsfeed to um, favor, really kind of give preference over a, a native link post or a, a link post format. So we've all, we all recognize this, okay? So if you go to Facebook and you, you go to your Facebook page and you go to post a text update or just a status update and you uh, enter a link, a URL, a preview will automatically be created. So it will create a, pre, a featured image will be created. It will be pulled in from that web page and it will automatically generate a title. It will automatically generate a description of the link and it will have a, the link itself. Um, the URL itself is going to be mentioned in the update. So this is basically a, a native link post. Facebook tends to prefer this over uh, links that are included in a photo description or a video description or even a text update, a short link, say a bit.ly link in any type of update Aside from a link post, Facebook will tend to give the link post more visibility than another up type of update that happens to have a link in the description. Okay, uh, and you know some people had the, in the past, you know, one approach with getting links, more visibility on links, is to post a photo, post a great photo because photos get lots of engagement on Facebook. This was the thinking, you know, a few months ago, maybe a year ago. And of course, that photo gets lots of engagement. It's going to get passed around Facebook. It'll go viral a little bit. And why not just put a link in the description of that photo so that you can drive traffic to your website? Well, that doesn't really work so much anymore. And uh, the other critical takeaway is that uh, a link post actually has drives more traffic to your website anyhow, all right? So in other words, if I have the same exact photo but it's posted as a photo, if I click on the photo, I'm going to see the photo in a preview, right? The kind of the photo viewer on Facebook, right? I'll click on the photo. Great. There's a nice picture. In a link post, if I click on it, what's going to happen? I'm going to go to the website. If I click on the title, what's going to happen? I'm going to go to the website. If I click on the description link anywhere, really anywhere in this post, except for the description, I'm going to go and visit the website. So link posts are inherently much more effective at driving traffic to uh, your website, especially on mobile, right? Because all we have are thumbs. We can't really, you know, uh, do much more than that. We have a couple thumbs and fingers. We tap on the picture, the link, the description, whatever it might be, and we're going to visit the website. If I have a photo that I'm viewing on a mobile device, you know, I might be able to watch the fo I might be able to look at the photo pretty easily or the video pretty easily, but trying to click on the link in the description, you know, that takes a little bit more accuracy and, and my thumb. So you, you get the point. Okay. Um, the other update that they have is they're filling quiet news feed. So if a news feed, um, normally a news feed typically doesn't show um, multiple posts from a page in a row to a Facebook user. But in the case where a Facebook user may not have a lot of friends or they're new or they may not have liked lots of pages, Facebook will now, um, what they say, they're saying relaxing. They're relaxing that rule. So a Facebook user might receive and see a couple of updates in a row 
from a page or a person that, they, that they're friends with, okay? Uh, also, this is a pretty significant change here. This is recent. Facebook is now dialing down boring stories. What I, I'm just saying, I'm saying boring stories. And basically, this is activity from friends, uh, such as liking or commenting on posts. Those will appear lower in the newsfeed, all right? So in other words, if, if a fan of your page likes a photo, that person's friends will still see that action. Oh, Joe liked this photo on so-and-so's Facebook page. You know, that Joe's friends will still see that, but it will appear lower in the news feed. It will be given less priority, okay? Because, I mean, really, those aren't as interesting as a link shared by a friend or a picture shared by a page. Those are much more interesting, okay? Uh, so what should you do? Let, let's, I'm not going to go into the details here because we're going to be running out of time soon. But uh, really, the answer to the newsfeed, regardless of how much the newsfeed changes, honestly, is to publish quality content. Okay, publish quality content that's highly um, focused on what your, fan, what your fans want. So always be able to answer the question, what's in it for me? Um, in fact, I, I met with a... Um, a uh, homeless shelter yesterday. We had a, a training session in the morning and we were discussing this whole idea. And I said, you know, um, it's okay to post news about yourself. We have an event coming up. We have a fundraiser. Here's our new board member. But really that those type of posts should be 20% of what you're posting. Really, you know, 10, 20% of what you're posting. The rest should be um, intended to be useful and entertaining and um, relevant and uh, should be intended to engage the fans in a way that's going to make them look a certain way or feel a certain way, right? So when you post an update, here are a couple of questions to ask. You can easily, you know, you can ask yourself, would you share this update with your friends? You know, would you share this update with your friends? Really what that gets at is a much deeper issue about why people use Facebook to begin with, and one uh, one of the reasons why people use Facebook is to look a certain way and to feel a certain way. That's basically it. They want to look a certain way. They want to feel a certain way. So how does this update that you're about to publish, how does it make your fans look? Is it news, cutting edge news, and they want to feel like, I found this first. Look what I found. I'm the one who's breaking news, right? Or is this an incredible story that's so remarkable um, that they have to share that with their friends because it makes them feel uh, really uh, excited about the cause and really brings out that passion that they have for your cause, right? Is it timely? Is it a timely update uh, that gets into trending topics? So what are people talking about right now? What's in the news right now? Not on Facebook only, but, you know, across media, right? TV, newspaper, um, Twitter, Facebook, you know, what are the trending topics related to your cause? So are you, are you timely? Are you taking advantage of those trends? Uh, and of course, is this update uh, relevant, right? And then here are three strategies. One, the first one I mentioned, publish quality. The second one, this is really important, um, <clears throat> make it easier to share content from your website, all right? So if you notice, a lot of the changes in the newsfeed are really impacting Facebook pages, all right? Really impacting Facebook pages. But the other uh, shift in the newsfeed is that Facebook is preferring and giving preferential treatment to links posted by people, not pages necessarily, but people. So if a friend or a, a supporter of your organization goes to your website, and if you have a blog and you're publishing really great content, and you have obviously a like button or comments, Facebook comments, or even sharing, you know, encouraging people to share that update with their Facebook friends. Those type of shares, that type of content that's distributed in the newsfeed, obviously content that's linking directly to your website, Facebook will give that preferential treatment in the newsfeed algorithm. And the third uh, tip right here or strategy really is once you have an update on your page that's performing really well, Tell other people about it. Get people to share it. Go to your email list, um, post links on Facebook, post links on Twitter, and drive people to that update. So rallying your troops around content that's performing well. Okay. Uh, and then finally, uh, I, 
I highly encourage everyone here to experiment, try new things, always experiment, try and um, try and post conversation starters. You know, what's going to get people talking? What are they interested in? Let's, let's experiment. Let's kind of go outside the box a little bit and push the edge to experiment and, see, and keep things fresh. OK, but you really have to monitor uh, the, the tweaks that you make in your content strategy. So if you decide when uh, let's say you decide, oh, well, based on what John's talking about, maybe we want to try posting at a different time or we want to start posting more frequently on our Facebook page instead of once every other day, you know, in, in, at lunchtime, we're going to start posting every single day at 8 p.m. We're just going to do this experiment and see if it changes. If you make any kind of shift in that in your content strategy on Facebook, you want to go to Facebook Insights and look at the reach report. There's a reach report, and on one single report, you can see basically before and after. Okay, so before you're doing something, eh, you know it's working out okay, you know not too bad, but really we want to try something new. Let's see if that's going to have any impact. And so always go back to insights to confirm if something's working or not. And if you want to drill down even deeper into the updates and what type of content and what topics are working, you want to use uh, the posts report in insights and you can easily sort by engagement. So in this case, I'm sorting by likes, comments, and shares. So instantly, um, and I can look at up to three months of posts if I wanted to, but instantly, I'm seeing the top performing post right at the top, and I can see patterns. The top posts happen to be links. There's a status update. Not too many photos are getting engagement from this page. Most of all, it's going to be links. So that is it.